We're at Foxwoods Resort and Casino in Mashantucket, Connecticut. And our statistics tonight provided by CompuBox and Bob Canobio of CompuBox has this statistical breakdown of our main eventers tonight, Buster Douglas and Lou Savarese. CompuBox statistics for tonight's fight between Buster Douglas and Lou Savarese show Douglas to be more accurate and Savarese to be busier. In his upset victory over Mike Tyson, Douglas threw 44 punches per round, landing 52%. Remember, though, that was over eight and a half years ago. What's left in Douglas's tank remains to be seen. Lou Savarees, in his split decision loss to George Foreman, threw 73 punches per round. That's 20 punches above the heavyweight average. That's the good news. The bad news is Foreman managed to land 57% of his jabs. Speaking of jabs, both have good ones. Douglas threw 24 per round against Tyson, landing 54%, while Savarees threw 25 per round, landing 36%. Tonight's fight is being billed as now or never, and it's going to be now for the fighter that manages to land his jab consistently throughout this fight. We are getting set for the IBA Heavyweight Championship. It's scheduled for 12, Buster Douglas and Lou Savarese. Big crowd on hand here in Foxwoods. And uh, as we mentioned right at the outset, this is a chance for either of these men to step up into world title contention, Gil. Yeah, I really think so, Sam. Both of these guys said they really train hard for this fight. It's gonna, I think early we're gonna find out who's gonna be the boss in that ring. Uh, whoever is gonna be the boss, I think should have an impressive win tonight and step up big in the heavyweight division. What does Buster Douglas have to do to win this fight? Well, what he's, uh, he has to do is set up his combinations with that good left jab he has. He certainly has the better combinations, the better technique than Savarese. But I think that Savarese is the busier guy and the bigger and stronger guy. All right, in the locker room of Lou of Buster Douglas is Dave Bontempo. Let's join them right now as we get set for our main event. Dave? Uh, Buster, coming into this fight, your thoughts on what's at stake and the opportunity for you? It's a big opportunity to take the full advantage of it and uh, just go out there and uh, do what I do best, you know, work off the jab and let everything come off of it. What do you think of the style that you'll face and if this goes into the later rounds? Well, I was just going to be endurance. I mean, feel in great shape and I feel really good. Well, you talked about the opportunity. You're pumped up with that. Is this really a big, big fight for you? Big fight for me. Each and every one has been a big fight since I've been back in this gym. I feel really good and going out there and do my thing. All right, Buster, thank you. Good luck in the fight. The tail of the tape, Buster Douglas is 38 years old. Of course, he was out of the ring for six years. Lou Savarese is 32. The heights, 6'4", 6'5". Buster Douglas in at 242, and Savarese at 234 and a half. The reach, even. And the rules, the 10-point must system is the way they'll score it. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. Only the referee can stop the fight. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And in case of an accidental foul, they'll go to the scorecards after four rounds. If the fight is stopped in the round where the butt occurred, they will score that round. There is the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, a man who shocked the world with perhaps the biggest upset of all time in boxing when he knocked out Mike Tyson in 1990 in Tokyo. But then in his first title defense, he was stopped by Evander Holyfield. And now his main focus is on another fight with Evander Holyfield, though he said another fight with Mike Tyson would be okay, or maybe even Lennox Lewis. And Lou Savarese, a loss to George Foreman, a loss to David Izon. He came back with a win over Jeff Lally. This is a, a crucial fight for Lou Savarese. Mark Biro is in the ring, and here's the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, from the wonder of the Connecticut Woods, Foxwoods Resort Casino, Top Rank Incorporated, in association with TVKO and Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, this Bud's For You presents the Top Rank main event of the evening, 12 rounds for the vacant IBA Heavyweight Championship of the world. 
ring officials assigned by the International Boxing Association. In attendance, the President Cy Young Great, Dean Chance, and also World Ratings Chairman, the Honorable Norm Longton. Your judges at ringside are, from Brick, New Jersey, Tommy Kazmarek, from Muncie, Indiana, Gary Merritt, and from Southgate, Michigan, Frank Garza. Your referee for this event, from Windsor, Connecticut, the sensational Steve Smoger. Tonight's Fighters Records are brought to you by The Ring, the Bible of Boxing. Introducing now the principals first, in the red corner to my right, wearing the silver trunks, black trim, he weighs in at 234 and a half pounds with a professional record of 36 victories, two defeats, 30 wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Greenwood Lake, New York, introducing Lou. His opponent in the blue corner, wearing the gold trunks, weighing 242 pounds, with a professional record of 36 victories, five defeats, one draw, and 23 wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Columbus, Ohio, the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, James Buster Douglas! Douglas, 12 rounds for the vacant IBA Heavyweight Championship of the world. All right, gentlemen, you're giving your instructions at the win. They're fine, you're both fine. You're giving your instructions at the win. I want you to obey my commands at all times. Respect the bell at all times, and above all, protect yourself at all times. That'll be a clean shot, Buzz. Touch him up. God bless, babe. Here we go. Buster Douglas 6 and 0 in his two years back in the ring after a six year layoff when he came close to death. Lou Savaris in perhaps the biggest fight of his career. What do you think? Well, no question about that, Sam. He's been around an awful long time, hasn't had too many big shots. Uh, the Foreman fight was really the first big one. And now he's back in again uh, with a chance to step up. Scheduled for 12. And Douglas starts quickly with a jab, Gil. I think both, both of these guys, they're best, really their best punches, their left jab. And whoever establishes it early, Sam, I think he's really going to be the boss of this fight. Now, Savary said he worked on movement, head movement, and trying to get inside to negate that jab. He didn't want to get picked off by the Douglas jab, Dave. And he's hoping that not only that, but some strength training that he did in Houston will help him very much for this fight. He's in probably against... Hey, the best jabber that he's faced in his career. Good combination by Douglas. Savary's coming back. Come up, hands out. Douglas has always had one of the vintage jabs in the heavyweight division. Oh, right by Savary sends Douglas down. He seems like he's okay. He didn't bring that one back. As he was jamming, he did not bring it back, and Savary shocked him. Douglas collects himself. Now Savary can exert his strength. He's by far the stronger of the two guys. Two fights back, Buster Douglas was KO'd after the bell of round one by Louis Monaco. It was ruled a disqualification victory for Douglas. Douglas' legs are a little wobbly. Savarese moves in and lands. Yeah, Buster did try to feel his legs when he got up, Sam. He was a little wobbly. And again, he's taking punishment now from Savarese. What an opportunity for Savarese to end this early. Douglas trying to get the jab back working again. Not much snap on it there. Bigger than the first 
last one. Seven. Hey, how you feel, Buster? Come on now, come on. In comes Savarese again. There is no three knockdown rule. Douglas is hurt. The Almost the ready to go. The referee can stop it, though. No knockdown. That is no knockdown. No, it is. It is. Excuse me. Douglas can't get up. It's over. Shocking ending, something, a scenario that was not predicted in Las Vegas where betting is legal. There was a lot of late money on Buster Douglas. He'd been a 7-5 favorite coming in, and then he shocked here. Lou Savarese trained in the House of Pain in Houston. He delivered some pain tonight. Well, yeah, he had a Vandal Holyfield down there, Michael Grant. They all went through the same workouts. Apparently, it's paying off. That's the best. It only lasted a round, but that's the best I've ever seen Lou Savarese throw punches. By far, it's the best I've ever seen him. So he said he did some weight training. Been the strongest he's ever been in his life. Buster Douglas at age 38, his comeback is derailed. Yes, Sam, and there would have to be serious questions about should he be back in there again because of the nature of this, where he's been, where he's come to, and getting blown out in the first round here by Lou Savarese. A stunning ending in the first round. Well, Douglas has one of the vintage shifts, but watch what happens. Watch the left hand. He brings it out, but does not bring it back. And Savarese clocks him with that. A lazy jab, and Lou Savarese very opportunistic there. Then he watched his big right hand here, the second knockdown. That was Titanic on the temple. Surprised it did not end the fight right there. Douglas did get up. And then Savarese closing the show. You know, he could smell this big opportunity. And it was not over when Douglas went down. It was over halfway through the count when he flopped back. I wasn't sure that Steve Smoger was going to rule that a knockdown. It looked like a little bit of a push. He looked at Buster Douglas at the count of five. When Douglas slid back, Smoger made his decision. And there is the jubilant Savarese. And Douglas could not get up as he tried, but he fell back. And that's it, Gil. What are your thoughts about the way it ended? Well, I, I was very impressed by Savarese when we had our meeting with him. And Buster just looked to me like he was kind of drained out. Said so he tra trained in that hot Florida heat. He's an older guy. I thought it took a lot out of him. A stunning fit. It looked like Buster was okay when he started the fight. His jabs looked sharp, and then he got caught. Well, he got nailed. See, and once you get nailed with a good punch like that, you know, your reflexes go. You're, you're never the same. Is this it for Buster Douglas? Oh, I think it should be, Sam. No question about it. And for Lou Savarese, well, a big stepping stone for him. Big stepping stone. He's a big, impressive-looking heavyweight. He's only lost two fights. And, you know, uh, he's got a big opportunity now. Well, he said he never complained about the split decision loss to George Foreman. He did get nailed by David Eisen the next fight, but he bounced back. Yes, he did. Well, uh, again, he said he went into this new training program with weights. He's just the heaviest, second he heaviest he's ever been for a fight. Apparently, this is where he belongs. Mark Biro with the final tally. Time, two minutes, 34 seconds of the first round. The winner by tactical knockout and IBA heavyweight champion of the world, Lou. For Lou Savarese. Well, that's going to make him feel good. He threw his punches very well, put everything into it, and he showed the power. That strength conditioning, no doubt, worked for him very, very well. And now the door is open for Lou Savarese. 
Who Savarese landed 19 of 26. And now into the ring, Dave Montempo is with the winner. Dave. Thank you, Sammy. Lou, of all the scenarios that you picture with this fight, was that one of them? Yes, it was. I'll be honest. I mean, we trained so hard for this. It's unbelievable. This is what it was all teamwork. It was incredible. We had uh, Al Bolden, Tommy Gallagher. We had uh, Kenneth Richardson, Tim Hallmark. And uh, thank Jesus and God, number one. I, I'm dedicating this fight to three people my father, my uncle Jim, and Mr. O'Connor. And these are three, these are the true heroes in life. But this is what I'm dedicating this fight to. Thank you. All right, Luke. Now, you said that you did it. Picture this scenario possibly coming true. Now, did you think you could lure him into a mistake or he might not bring his jab back? You know, I was so, yeah, that's one thing we were looking at. We, we had studied film. I was training, I trained 14 weeks for this fight, getting up 5.30 every morning with my strength coach, Kenny, Tommy, uh, Al Bolden, everybody. And we just, Tim Homer, we just worked so hard for this. I mean, we had, to, we had to pay our dues and we just did it and everything worked out perfect. Lou, let's take a look at this first knockdown, first to knock down the sequence. Tell us what you see here. Well, I was looking, looking, and he kept dropping his jab. And I kept, oh, perfect. That's what we've been working on, turning our back foot, and that's we did with if Tim Omar and guys that I know talking about turning that back foot, and that's what we did. What did you think right there? I was just excited. I mean, you know, this is it. I just wanted to be calm, not get too crazy. I wanted to go to the body and then come back to the head. That was a titanic blow, the second one. Yeah. Did you think the fight was over there? Yes, I did. He's bust is a tough guy. I mean he's a he's a true legend, you know. The guy's a great fighter, I know. I'm sorry, but somebody has to be a loser, you know. Then you were able to get him the third time. And uh, make no mistake about it. Yeah, yeah, I had him. I caught him right on the temple. We've been practicing. We've been doing a lot of anaerobic work. We knew we could just keep stepping up, keep stepping up, keep stepping up, and that's what we did. You talked I'm about boy, here, the house of pain. You talked about everything you did in Houston. In, in your mind, is this the best you've ever thrown the right hand? Oh, uh, we're throwing it straighter than ever, and we're turning it. I used to throw good, and I got away from it a little bit. Now, now we're doing things right. Hey, Lou, people were not saying Lou Savarese was going to win this fight. Oh, now, talk, about, talk I, about what this means now. Oh, I, I actually read in uh, one paper that I'm a sacrificial lamb. But let me tell you, this lamb bites because we came back, man. I mean, but, you know, that's what it's all about. And, uh, you know, it was just hard work, and that's what we did. We had a loss, and we came back. We didn't bury our heads, and yeah. we came back. This guy right here, we up Al Bolden. and we're up 5.30 every morning. My teamwork, my manager, Phil Pulaski, uh, Ed Cotite, my uh, advisor, Bob Speck, and all the things worked out great. Tommy Gallagher, it's one big team. Your sentiments when this fight was officially over, first thing that ran through your mind? Just hard work, and thank God, I mean, obviously. And I was thinking about my dad, my yeah. father, my uncle Jim, wow. and Mr. O'Connor. This is who I'm dedicating this fight to. Well, Lou, a career in one night, huh? Yep. Yeah. Oh, no, we're going to have a lot more to come, guys. <laughs> right. uh, a career highlight in one night. Congratulations to Lou Savarese. Back to you, Sam. Thank you, Dave. Gil, the only person, the only people he didn't thank were you, me, and Dave. Well, that, that's correct. <laughs> Good job by Lou Savarese. And uh, mom is in the ring. Oh, boy, that's that's a nice picture. And uh, the door's now open for him, Gil. Oh, he, he, Sam, take a look. This kid is a promoter's dream. Big, tall, strong guy. Just knocked out Buster Douglas. Now it's a question of finding the next step up the ladder for him is he ready for Evander Holyfield Sam he's been around for nine years if he's not ready now he's never going to be ready they can't uh, they, that one earlier in his career that was a problem that they over managed him they never put him in any test fights I mean he was knocking out one guy after the other but there were nobodies how about Mike Tyson that, that would be a, just a, a great draw, a fight like that. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the other champion is Lennox Lewis. And uh, two big guys. That might be an interesting matchup as well. Right. Uh, he's, he's taking a big step up right now. It depends on who his next opponent is and where it is. Lou Savarese, late in the first round, knocking out Buster Douglas. A stunning conclusion. A big performance for Lou in his most important fight ever as he too in the stages of a comeback as was Buster Douglas and Douglas's comeback may certainly derailed but maybe over as he has stopped in the first round as we pointed out before that means in the last three fights the Monaco fight he got knocked out, he got knocked out but for him for Buster Douglas at the time who was fortunate it was ruled a disqualification to Monaco he came back with a win after that but now Savarese wears the IBA belt out of the ring and certainly 
will be awaiting the offers from the top fighters in the heavyweight division. A happy moment for Lou Savarese. It's an interesting start to the fight as we talked to looked at Buster Douglas who had come down to 242. He too felt he was in good condition and he shot the jab out and it looked pretty good and then suddenly got uh, he got caught by the right hand. Well he, he did not he, he did not bring that jab back to protect his jaw and that's what happened. He let it hang out there and suddenly he just threw a right hand right over. And let's take a look back as we go to the beginning of the bout. Look at the snap. Douglas looks pretty good with the with the jab, shooting it out there. Well, he, he's always had that good left jab, uh, Sam. But again, when we when we interviewed him yesterday, he looked to me like he was a washed out, uh, washed out individual. A little lethargic to you? He just looked, and he told us he had been training in that Florida heat. He mentioned a couple of the sparring partners he had, so they must have been wars. And uh, it may have taken an awful lot out of him. And I knew this Savarese was the stronger of the two guys if he got him into in, in any kind of a war. Well, the strength training certainly helped Lou Savarese. Well, good combination there by Douglas. At this point, Douglas looks fine. Beautiful combination. There was that right hand. Wow. This is why the public likes heavyweight, Sam. One punch the big changes bombs. a lot of things. Douglas here collected himself. Looked like he was okay. Well, the right little right leg looked a little wobbly. He looked like he was trying to get himself collected. You can see those legs are a little rubbery. Yeah. Though. Savage did the smart thing, go to the body, try and get him to drop his hands again. Oh, good sharp left hand by Savarese. Savarese is staying nice and cool and calm, looking for the spot. You see those body punches again. Buster snapping his punches out pretty good. Nice jab again. At this point, it looked like he had gotten back in his rhythm. And then again, the big right hand right on the button. You could hear it sound like a bomb. But why was Buster so open for that? Six. He looked it around that left hand, Sam. It wasn't that Buster was that careless with that left hand that time. But he looped it right around his protected left hand. And here's Savarese. Good finish here. All over Douglas. Douglas is hurting and finally just collapsed. He tries to get up here, and this is where it's all over. He can't get up. That's it. That's it. And a sad finish for Buster Douglas. An exhilarating finish for Lou Savarese. A very emotional moment for Lou Savarese as he wins his biggest fight ever. For Lou Savarese, now 37 and 2 with 31 knockouts. And this was moments ago. Lou Savarese still trying to get to the locker room, but signing autographs for the fans remaining here in the big hall here at Foxwoods Resort and Casino. Quite a moment for Lou Savarese. Boy, all those uh, early morning wake ups. Wasn't doing as much running, he told us, but a lot of the sprinting. And that seemed to help him as well. Well, that's a, that's a new method of training. As far as I'm concerned, it's a new method. I know Oscar De La Hoya, uh, he does wind sprints. And it's, uh, you know, one day it's regular road work, another day is wind sprints. And apparently it works. I did some lifting and strength training and strength conditioning with uh, Evander Holyfield's strength coach. And uh, that certainly helped out. Good sparring down there in Houston. Take a look back at uh, we talked about the emotion for Lou Savarese. This was uh, when it was over. <laughs> Acknowledging the Douglas people. There's Buster. And then the just overcome with emotion. Tommy Gallagher, his trainer, was there. You can see he's ready to break down. There he was, he had tears coming down. Knowing how much he had put into this fight and the results. 
Well, he's been around so many years, Sam. Ten years. Now, as you pointed out, Gil, he was carefully brought along and didn't fight any major fighters, any big names. And then when he got in against George Foreman, a competitive fight, but still a losing effort on his part. Well, again, it was a close fight. It showed the fact that he had plenty of courage and he could take a punch. Right now, we're going to Dave Bontempo in the locker room of the loser, Buster Douglas. Take it away, Dave. Buster, thanks for taking this time right now. Explain if you can what happened. Well, just got got caught early, and uh, got a little excited. Instead of uh, you know taking that first eight count, you know, in, in, the, in the first knockdown, it just never recovered. I mean, you know, well, you know, never recovered. Your jab, vintage jab in the heavyweight division, maybe just didn't bring it back the first time, and he caught you with the right hand. Yeah, I can look at the tape. You know. Let's see what it was. And, um, you know, he's a good fighter. Heavyweight fights happen like this, a lot of first round knockouts. What about you? What do you think you'll do now? Oh, well, you know, I don't foresee me. You know, I, I, I try to do something that, uh, you know, I've been in an uphill battle ever since, you know, but, you know, life goes on. I'm maintained and, uh, you know, keep my head up, and you know, I gave it a hell of a try. You know, I was trying to do some impossible, do the impossible, and uh, you know, unfortunately, it didn't work out for me. You know, but uh, you know, I, you know, just keep my head up and uh, live my life. <laughs> you came back from a much more difficult situation than this. I won, I won in the battle of life. I just lost the fight. You know? <laughs> but uh, I take my hat off to Savarese. You know, better man won. You're satisfied, at least, that you've given it a run here, and you took another shot at boxing. Yeah, I came back and gave it a gave it a, a good run, real good run. <laughs> Fortunately, it just didn't work out, you know. But uh, it happened. So. so you'll go back and assess and then see what to do now with your life, boxing wise. You don't know yet. Uh, I pretty much know it's probably it's, that was the end. I hate to go out on a note like that, but you know it happens, you know. But I'm a I'm a big man and I'm a you know just live my life. Okay, Buster, thank you. And we are back at ringside here in Foxwoods, Connecticut. And you heard Buster Douglas. Now, he might uh, change his mind. Who knows? But uh, you can see how saddened he was, how down he was. But uh, when you lose like that, you've gotten uh, knocked down in the first round uh, in two of your last three fights. I think maybe it, it is time to call it a career, Gil. Sam, 18 years is a long time. That's how long he's been a professional fighter. I'm sure even if he wanted to continue, his father, Billy, just wouldn't allow it. No, I think uh, for his family, it might be uh, better that he better serve that he step out right now. You hate to go out on a losing note, but uh, you can see that uh, he certainly doesn't have it right now. Uh, absolutely, Sam. I think he'll definitely stay retired and just live a happy, healthy life. All right, Dave, uh, you had a chance to talk to Buster. He was certainly down, but uh, uh, he gave, you know, he gave credit to Lou Savarese where it belonged. Yes, he certainly did. He's always been classy that way, and I think for Buster Douglas, the good thing is it's a clear message. It's not like, well, should I or shouldn't I? It's been very clearly spelled out for him, and he took it with a lot of dignity. All right, we heard uh, Gill's comments on Lou Savarese. What are your thoughts about Lou as we, uh, we saw him fight the best we've ever seen? Uh, he, the guy looks reborn the way he threw the right <laughs> hand. He came in there with a lot of fire, and the fact is that he jumped on opportunity. Not always was doing that in the past, but he rose up, not intimidated at all, and that work paid off. I think the second right hand was the big one, the second knockdown in that first round. All right, let's step back. Quick thoughts on Julio Cesar Chavez heading toward Oscar De La Hoya. Well, he barely was able to dodge the bullet tonight, came back with a lot of fire. He, of course, will have his work cut out against Oscar. Gil, final thoughts. Uh, Chavez and De La Hoya in September. I'm looking forward to it, Sam. Should be a great fight. All right, that wraps it up. The big night, now or never, here in Foxwoods, Connecticut, finished off by the big win, the first round knockout by Lou Savarese.